Thanks to the research of NASA's unmanned probes, scientists know that water in the liquid state is present on Europa, Jupiter's moon, and on Enceladus, Saturn's ice moon. It is already quite obvious that there is a subsurface ocean on Europa, Jupiter's moon, since there is a planet-wide ice crust. In recent years, in 2014 and 2016, geyser activity was discovered with the help of the Hubble telescope. That is, emissions were discovered. There is no doubt that there is a subsurface water ocean on Saturn's nearest satellite, Enceladus, since there is powerful geyser activity on this satellite. This is Saturn's closest satellite, and so the physical explanation is clear. The water in the depths of Europa and Enceladus is heated by geological activity. Gas giants affect satellites with powerful gravitational, or as it is also called, tidal force. Because of this force, the ice moons are constantly stretching and contracting, warming up the inside. As a result, cracks form in the ice shell, through which water bursts out, flying in huge streams into open space. It looks especially impressive on Enceladus. In the southern hemisphere, there are many geysers which emit jets of water vapor and dust particles hundreds of kilometers high. The American space probe Cassini was able to fly through them and even determine the composition of the emissions. 93% of these emissions are water or water ice. Well, they just freeze right away. About 4% are nitrogen and 1.6% are methane. About 1% is complex organic compounds. That's their composition. Well, basically, it is possible that Enceladus may also have a fairly salty composition of its internal ocean. That is why the possibility of the existence of life, of course, requires additional research. Samples from the jet plume of Saturn's moon collected by the Cassini spacecraft are still being studied. In 2018, experts announced that they found complex organic macromolecules, the building blocks of life. Moreover, unlike Enceladus, the existence of an ocean on Europa can actually be considered to be a proven fact. If we look at the surface of Europa, it looks like a frozen lake with some cracks, loops, and so on. This is what the whole surface of Europa looks like. And this layer of ice is maybe 30 to 60 miles deep. And there are reasonable grounds to assume that under this layer, there is an ocean of water in liquid form. Moreover, its temperatures are sufficient to sustain life. And microorganisms could get energy to exist just as they do at the bottom of our oceans, from the core of the satellite, not from the sun because it is clear that the amount of solar energy reaching there would be very low. Scientists suggest that the conditions at the bottom of the ocean on Europa are quite suitable for the existence of thermophilic terrestrial bacteria, which inhabit the so-called black smokers. These are volcanoes at the bottom of the sea with superheated fluids, and these microbes live there. They can develop at such high temperatures. What do they eat? Well, the highest temperature microbe, for example, consumes hydrogen. Such thermophilic organisms were found while drilling ice on the Antarctic Lake Vostok, which is located under a three-mile glacier. It is assumed that they live in hot springs at the bottom of the reservoir. Scientists consider this reservoir a testing ground for developing the technology for penetrating the ocean of Europa. Even on Earth, to drill through a 30-mile layer of ice is currently an unsolvable task. Therefore, various cryobots are being actively tested in Antarctica. These are controlled devices that use heat and can melt ocean ice and thus penetrate underwater. The probe is wired to the control unit on the surface. Various measuring instruments are also installed on it. Such devices may be used to melt ice on Europa in the future. Water melts well. So this probe can produce a borehole just by melting ice. Of course, we'll have to resolve the issue of communication there to control its movements and so on. But I'd like to point out that these are not unsolvable problems. They have been discussed seriously, and with the advancement of modern space exploration, we can solve them.
What makes penetrating the subglacial ocean on Europa possible is its tectonics. In the beginning, when space probes started to fly there, we found that the surface was very similar to the surface of our northern Arctic Ocean. It even had pressure ridges. The thing is that its surface is shaken from time to time. Earthquakes occasionally occur there due to tidal forces, which produces cracks. As soon as cracks form, the liquid from inside comes to the surface, and pressure ridges are formed, which, I'll repeat myself again, are very similar to those in Antarctica. The ice fin vehicle, developed by the Georgia Institute of Technology, should help us penetrate these cracks. It has the shape of a torpedo with a length of almost 14 feet and a width of only 0.8 feet. Due to this, ice fin can sneak into small cracks and holes in the ice sheet. This vehicle, developed by American scientists, is already carrying out such tasks successfully, researching the oceanic flora and fauna off the coast of Antarctica. Water emissions from under the ice crest of Europa will occur in the same area of the planet. Maybe we will be able to find a stable crack through which we can penetrate the subglacial ocean. But for this, we will need to study the relief of the celestial body carefully to take really detailed photos with good resolution. The European Space Agency is seriously thinking about it. Now the JUICE mission is being prepared for Jupiter and its moons. The launch is scheduled for 2022, but scientists will only receive the first pieces of data in 2030. In the meantime, the mission to get into Europa's ocean is something for the distant future. But even without this, we can learn a lot about it. That's because on Europa, there are places where water from the subsurface ocean breaks to the surface and freezes quickly. We can take samples of the ice from the surface, somehow melt it into a liquid state and analyze it to see if there are any microorganisms. That is, we can conduct some biological experiments. This can be actually done right on board the probe. This is perhaps the most realistic scenario for finding life on Europa in the next 10 to 15 years. NASA and the Russian Space Agency are already developing unmanned vehicles that can land on Europa and take samples of the ice. However, the specific dates of their launch are not yet established in view of the technical complexity and high cost of such projects. But we have the experience of the landing modules on Mars, which means that this is a completely feasible task. Of course, most of all, scientists dream of sending astronauts with research equipment to Europa who would be able to dive into the subglacial ocean in a submersible. But such plans are still science fiction because of the high level of radiation. Europa is practically in the middle of a very powerful magnetosphere and Jupiter's radiation belt. Therefore, it is possible that some missions for a more detailed study of Europa could be implemented. But the problem is the very high level of radiation. A person without a spacesuit would get a lethal dose of radiation in less than 10 minutes. How well does the ice crust protect the ocean of Europa from the deadly flow of charged particles? This question requires additional study. Even extreme microorganisms may not be able to survive in this ocean. The probability of finding a civilization of fish-like people, or at least fish in the ocean of Europa, is currently estimated by the scientific community as equal to zero. On the other hand, Jupiter's two neighboring satellites have much lower levels of radiation. It is 90 times lower on Ganymede and 54,000 times lower on Callisto. And these moons could also have oceans. They apparently are under a much thicker crust. There is indirect evidence, in particular the fact that Ganymede and Callisto have weak magnetic fields. And the only possible explanation is the presence of an internal ocean, a salty, conductive ocean. 